Hello and welcome to the Monday, October 9th, 2023 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Got a couple of quick diaries from the weekend. First, a continuation of something Jim posted last week about IPv4 address stored in Little Endian format. Happens in Windows, but also happens in the Linux slash proc file system. DDA now extended the script to also work with IPv6 addresses. I think I mentioned that it's really not that terribly important for IPv6 because the hexadecimal conversion doesn't have to be done uh, but uh, still nice to have this tool and then we got a little bit confusion about wireshark updates this uh, weekend there were uh, two that followed uh, within a couple of hours in particular for mac users uh, mac os apparently had issues with version 4 or 9 uh, to load one of the plugins and uh, that was quickly fixed uh, with a new update i'll just link uh, to the wireshark homepage so that way you can pick up whatever wireshark version is latest today they do release pretty steady streams of updates. And GitHub keeps improving its secret scanning service. So what this initially did when it first come, came out was to basically look for tokens, API keys and the like, and alert you if it found something in your repository that looked like one of those secrets. The problem initially was that, well, it pretty much just looked for the correct format, but sometimes these were just sample tokens or tokens that were no longer valid. So GitHub then started doing some validity checks on these tokens to check if they are still valid and then basically mark them as still valid in the report. So that way you could prioritize them. Of course, uh, that depends very much on the service they're being used with. And GitHub now extended this validity check for for AWS, Microsoft, Google, and Slack. So you now got your major cloud providers covered here, as well as Slack, which of course also uh, very uh, commonly used tools. And it will now tell you not just that you have a token or something that looks like a token, but also whether or not this token is actually still valid. You have to enable this as a specific feature. So when you're enabling secret scanning, there are two options that you have to check. One basically just enables that the check happens uh, for these tokens. And then the second option also enables the uh, verification if the token is still valid. Now, when we think about Android devices, most people think about phones, but Android is used in a lot of different devices, not just phones, also in many of these TV sticks uh, that are being sold to stream a video from the internet to TVs. Well, uh, the problem with uh, those devices has been for a long time that in particular, the cheaper ones are often coming with additional payload. Ars Technica now has a good uh, write-up about some of the recent findings here. This is an ongoing problem. This is not uh, fundamentally new. I think uh, Linus Tech Tips uh, covered that uh, relatively recently as well. Your best defense here is uh, to get uh, these devices from a reputable source, not just a reputable vendor, but also make sure that the maker of the device is well, a brand that you at least uh, kind of recognize and somewhat trust. Once you have one of these devices, it's very difficult to, first of all, identify that they're compromised, and then secondly, uh, remove whatever additional backdoor or software was installed. Also just uh, looking at network traffic and for example, flagging traffic that is going to China as potentially a suspect or malicious. Yes, that's one indicator, but uh, I think uh, last year I wrote about a device that uh, I've uh, seen that did, for example, communicate to Baidu. And uh, however, it just did that sort of as an internet connectivity check. There are some uh, libraries that uh, do that. So uh, really not that easy to identify these uh, compromised devices. And then a story to close things out here that I wasn't quite sure whether I should cover it or not, but decided then to cover it. Daniel Stenberg, the maintainer of Curl. Curl, of course, the library and the command line utility uh, to uh, 
basically emulate HTTP requests. Daniel announced that on Wednesday, October 11th, there will be a new version of curl fixing two vulnerabilities, one of them rated high. And I think he mentioned that this is of the most severe vulnerability in this library kind of ever. The reason I was a little bit hesitant to report on this is that, well, first of all, there's nothing you can do now other than get ready. Once the vulnerability is coming out, it's probably just a matter of uh, basically updating your respective uh, Unix uh, tools and uh, development tools with uh, the most recent version of uh, curl. We'll see what will actually happen and what the nature of the vulnerability is. Daniel also had some issues in the past uh, where people did submit uh, vulnerabilities uh, to curl that had sort of inflated CVSS ratings. Well, uh, we'll see what happens. Just be ready on October 11th. Of course, Tuesday also being Microsoft Patch Tuesday, you may need to quickly update Curl. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.